All right, so the, uh, this will be obviously a nice condensed version of what I had originally planned. Uh, with the default uh, photo in Keynote there. The Edition Engraver. I think, uh, has anyone used the Edition Engraver other than me? <laughs> All right, two or three people. Um, you saw a little bit about it in Jan Petta's uh, presentation for the, uh, the Bach, uh, if you were at that presentation. So what is the Edition Engraver? The Edition Engraver is uh, a system that inserts, I'm, I'm going to try to simplify it, and, uh, I don't really know how the black box magic hand waving works, but what I do know is that there is a slur that doesn't look very good in my score, and I put in one line of code in this other file, and the slur looks good. <laughs> That's what I know. And what that allows me to do is completely separate presentation from content. To the point where now I was saying to a young Peter that uh, bar lines, I choose my final bar line in the edition. I, I set my final bar line in the edition engraver. Why would I do that? Well, sometimes, especially in, in the, the music that I write often, which is music theater, a piece could be a standalone audition piece, which needs a double bar, a regular thick bar line. It could be part of a continuous. Uh, scene with a segue, which is a double bar and a, and a little note that says attack a segue. Uh, it could be, it could be uh, only half of it with a repeat because there's a vamp that's necessary for the, for the music theater director to cover some time. The way that a piece ends in my world can be quite variable. And uh, the addition engraver allows me a huge amount of uh, presentational control. So I think I'm going to just cut out of this and go straight to an example here. Uh, let me just compile that anew. So here we have standard uh, Frescobaldi, thank you, Frescobaldi, um, and a very simple uh, lyric and, and uh, note situation here. And on the left hand side, you will see that what we've done is we've said include uh, the package manager from uh, open the lid. Then load package, edition engraver. So now we're bringing in all the magic black box code. And then I say the edition engraver by using this this uh, shorthand consist to contexts. I am interested in manipulating the following contexts. So I'm uh, in this particular example, which is the one the one that comes with the the, the uh, download. I'm going to potentially access the score context, a staff, one or more staff contexts, one or more voice contexts, and one or more lyrics contexts. If you, as I do, create um, custom contexts, you simply add it on to the end of that, or you can do a whole new line. You can say, for example, uh, I'm going to go with, I have a wind group. Yeah. Um, custom staff group that does a bunch of things for my wind uh, instruments. And so now, only now that I put that line in, will the addition engraver uh, be applied to that context. I can write a whole bunch of mods, but until I put that line, it's not actually going to affect the wind. Could you please have a bigger function? Yes, of course, absolutely. Yeah. All right. As someone who needs reading glasses, I feel embarrassed that I didn't do that to begin with. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Maybe 22. Yeah. Okay. So uh, once again, uh, including the package, uh, package manager, including the engraver, and then saying to the addition engraver, these are the the contexts I'm interested in applying to. Now below, as I said, this is an example that was uh, included. You can see right here, for example, addition mod says I am making a modification. I'd like to make a modification. Test. This word is just a, 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 a label that you get to put on the addition. So I use, for example, uh, piano vocal. That's a, an addition that I will uh, apply to my <coughs> piano vocal score. And everything that I, that I put addition mod piano vocal will apply only to that 
addition, only to that version of my score. Then I give it a moment, in this case, second bar, it's zero indexed, so uh, at the beginning, the first quarter note is zero over four. And in this case, I'm, a, I'm uh, addressing the score context at that moment. So what I would like to inject into the score context at to uh, the second bar first quarter is a new time signature. Time, three, four. Now, if I just compile this, it won't quite work yet. I have all of these potential mods, but they're not doing anything yet because I need to add to the engraver. I need to say, you need to know about the, the, the addition called test. So there's this line here, add addition test. And I'm going to just take out a few of these so that you'll see uh, it will become a little clear. Oops. So the only mod I'm going to apply at this moment, when I save this and compile it, I've, I've told the uh, addition engraver to be interested in those contexts. I've added an addition called test, and then I've added exactly one mod to that addition. And what it should do is inject. I think it doesn't know the wind group right now. Oh, yeah, no, that's a, sorry. That's because I hadn't, I'll just take that one back out. Right, so it's injected into that moment at the, in the score context a 3 4. If I don't like the way that the, uh, the two eighth notes here, I would like to beam them. I can say inject in the first bar at the second, sorry, at the third eighth note, <laughs> the moment of the third eighth note, inject a left uh, bracket to be the beginning of the beaming, and at the Fourth eighth note, inject a right bracket. And, oh, does it. So I'll go ahead and just undo all of these, and you'll see the <coughs> result. Every single one of these does, oops, not that one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that was not going to do anything good. So I'm, in this case, we're injecting uh, phrasing, we're injecting tempos, we're injecting dynamics, we're injecting, we're, we're forcing something to be a melisma that wouldn't normally be a melisma, and you will see it all changes. Now, when I started, of course, there wasn't an addition engraver, and everything, as with most of, of beginning coders, everything was in my content code. All of the tempos, all of the bar lines, all of the dynamics, and much of that remains in the content code. But I am finding myself pulling lots of things out. Um, instrument names. I, 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 I control entirely from the addition of paper. Thank you. Um, and the problem that I'm now going to open up to the group is how do I think you can probably see, maybe I'll take 30 seconds of questions before the next part of the talk. But, uh, you can see the potential power of being able to uh, keep all of your presentation code separate from your content code. Does anyone not understand how awesome that is? <laughs> can you show the content? Yeah, the, yeah the content of that is just that. That's it. Right, so, and, and of course what I do is, uh, in all of this gets taken out into an include file called, you know, my song dash edition. So I have my song note code, I have my song edition code, I have a little tiny uh, compile code with the, with the staff context, and I just compile from there, I change the, the note code very seldom once it's, once it's set, and I do everything in the edition code. Any other questions before I pose the big question? Uh, if you refer to specific locations by their moment, uh, so for example, the time three third, uh, three fourths, yeah, so will have an impact on the on the references that come later. So yeah, because oh, yes. yeah. so so can you have um, like tags for specific locations in your story? <laughs> okay, so let me give you a quick history. <laughs> <laughs> So the quick history is that maybe six years ago, I put on the email list, is there a way in the 
happened to inject at a specific moment a, a change. And the author said, oh, I'm working on this thing for myself. Great. What I would like to do is after A, a bar and a half. Boom. Well, I don't have that. What I have is if you know the number of measures, you can inject it at that moment. And I have that time, that's fine. But as, as you say, if things start to shift around, if I, if I take a whole bunch of bars out, then all of those numbers after that are wrong. And I have to manually go through and readjust those, right? So that is one of the parts of the question of the, of the next section. So we'll just hold on to that. You had another. My question is, when you have multiple saves, yep. how do you select the one you want? Yep, absolutely. So I will pull up one more example here, uh, which is, say, development, no, example one. Does this one have the A? Uh, let me just open. Okay, so in this case, um, it's, it's a little bit more complex and we, have, we don't have enough time, so hopefully you can follow. But we're saying in the addition called test, right, so I'm applying this mod to that addition, there is an ID somewhere in, that, in the big blob of contexts called sing along with Bach. It's probably a staff context. And inside that context, this is the context here, sing along with Bach, right? Inside that context, there are multiple voices. And I want, in this case, the second voice, the B. So you can apply a, an ID that you've specifically chosen, or you can reference by A, B, C, D, E if there are multiple contexts. Are the separators there all periods? That is a uh, coding choice that I have uh, suggested. Uh, and I suggested he, uh, perhaps in the examples, avoid, because the dots are, for, for you, are just a connector, right? Yes, uh, the dot notation is made by David Castro. <laughs> so you have a list. All that is a list. So, and you can see voice context, and it counts. We have how many voices in this area. It counts those. And when I implemented it, um, we didn't have the numbers. Now I would say one, two, three, four, of course. And so that's the reason why I yeah. selected a few years ago A, B, C. Yeah, with string. No, no, it's like a string with a lot yeah, of it's, it's not that. Lot of, uh, instead of just a string with uh, spaces. In it's not, yeah. yeah. So, so what I've done here, just to avoid confusion, is I've changed it to sing along a bar with no spaces, no dots. Yeah, uh, you can name that portion of it whatever you want, including having dots in it. That that ID can have dots in it, and you often use that for your ID uh, identification, which makes the understanding of the examples uh, a little more difficult mm -hmm. because the dots then have a new meaning mm -hmm. when you attach voice. Yeah, to the I mean, you could just use dashes for example. Yeah, yeah. And you wouldn't even need quotes. Yeah, that's that's but, a that's a small that's a small issue. For, for the document, <laughs> the reason for this for the documentation in this place is, is it is a list. It is yesterday I uh, talked about paths, and okay. this is it. it uh, this um, this place it, uh, in so I developed this and, and it uh, shows the structure of my templating. So it is okay. still path. But oh, it is. But no, no, no. This is path. Yes. Now you could yes. Cross so, instead, but. Thank you. No, 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 no. Yes. Why do that? <laughs> so, so down here, see where, the, where down in the score, he said the addition ID for this score is sing dot with dot bar. Okay. So, so we can this. Yeah. yeah. So we could take this and just to uh, avoid confusion in the example and say sing along with Bach and just call it that. That could be the ID name. And then when I come up here, uh, or there's no along, right? Yeah. Uh, so now sing along with Bach. Voice B. Uh, yeah. Along yes. was the name of the stuff. Oh, okay. Good. Yes. <laughs> sing, sing with Bach along, yes. Uh, sing with Bach. Dot along. Don't, 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 don't say no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I don't have access to it. These are all details that, that, are, that are not as important. Instead of okay. uh, these, de these details are not important. The point is that you can apply an ID to a context. And you can either address that ID exactly, or if there are contexts, if there are children contexts, you can dot address them using dot voice dot 
A, B, C, D, E to get down to multiple, to get down to exactly the context you're interested in. That answers my question. That answers your question. I know, I was trying to get there, but. Other questions before I pose the big question? <laughs> Please pose the big question. Okay. Oh, oh, okay, just one remark. We had a, a, um, a edition mod time free uh, I, <laughs> I wouldn't say this is a good idea to bring in time signatures with the edition grader. It is possible, by, but I wouldn't recommend it because <laughs> the timing is. Yeah, okay. and, and yes. it, took, it took me many years of using this heavily to get to the point where I understand the, at least for me, which items absolutely must go in the addition grader, which items absolutely must go into content code, and which ones are context sensitive, right? And, and I, I, I have what I think is a pretty good system. But my big question is, well, I guess it's a two-part question. Do people think that having this kind of uh, separation of presentation and code uh, content is as important and cool and awesome as I think it is, because I use it constantly. Anybody not think it's important and cool and awesome? Great. Okay. I can't say it depends on the use case. Yes, no, absolutely. And and you you don't need the addition engraver. It doesn't have you as many people do, and I did for years. I put all of my tweaks with tags and I and I misused tag in order to try to do what is really just presentation manipulation. Uh, that, right? Just a comment. Uh, actually, in the early days of uh, really what, uh, there was also this discussion between content and uh, uh, rendering. Yeah. And it uh, really want from the uh, early yeah, days. It was always the intention that yeah. it would be like this. Yeah. So that's fully com uh, in, in uh, compliance with the, with basic, the philosophy. basic ideas. Yeah. Great. So uh, that question. Yes. Uh, I have. Uh, <laughs> well, it might be my question, so can I? Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. So, if it's agreed that it would be great to at least have the option for someone to split presentation and content, then is the addition engraver either the thing to use, the foundation of a thing to use, or at least the inspiration of a thing to use, and how do we integrate it into the thing? Yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, uh, the, the question I wanted to say is a side question. Basically, uh, it would be desirable here, and uh, if in Fresco Baldi I right click on some element to the right and uh, select Add Modification, and then it puts me in the editor in the right column, mm -hmm. uh, the last yes. right line. Uh, already, uh, yeah, I don't know whether it can uh, start the edition mod line, but it can at least. Uh, it doesn't know uh, which edition I want to name it, but it does know the measure number at some point of time. Hopefully, it will be able to use yes. it. Almost. And <coughs> yes, and uh, uh, I mean, we might need to put more information into the PDF for that to work. Uh, and if we do need that, obviously, uh, it's some, something we want to be doing. But I think that's yeah, it's a, it's a very important question. I'm and slightly ahead of the yeah, course. it would be. Uh, uh, for the workflow to work with this, it would be nice if you right click on an the element, then get set in the right line uh, in okay. left in the uh, in this list you have there, and then you can type in what you want to type. Agreed, but there are extra complexities that perhaps you don't know about, which I will introduce now. Uh, is it not really touches uh, on, a, on a number of attempts over the far past five years to to patch in some things at various places. Yeah. Yes. So. Let me throw in a, a nice little wrinkle into the right-click context world. I'm going to put in edition mod list. And I'm going to say test, uh, sing along with Bach voice C, override mode head color red, exactly like, oops, exactly like that line above. <coughs> I should, probably should have just Apple D to get that. Uh, but now I'm going to say, uh, 10, 1, 4, 12, 2, 4, 34, 0, 4. And now it's going to apply that mod in all three of those places. There are uh, convenient, there's sugar in, in what he's got to be able to address either multiple uh, moments with the same, in the same context with the same mod, 
multiple mods with the same moment and the same mod, or both of those. You can use regular expressions and say any staff with the word violin in it, apply this mod to. So suddenly the complexity of being able to right click and say, I know where to be in the mod code goes, goes asymptotic. But I, I also think that's just a, a little ahead of what I'm hoping this moment with all these lovely, smart, and, and, and knowledgeable people in the room, if this is a thing that we would like to get as an option, how do we, what's the next step? Uh, I would maybe pose a, a counter question to this and say, uh, are there any, uh, the answer is already yes, are there any engravers in, that are currently part of LilyPon, canonical LilyPon, that should be gone out of LilyPon, rewritten in Scheme, because they're not core and they're not essential to LilyPon. I know that there's all sorts of kind of um, medieval notation engravers and things like that that were written in C++ at the time, maybe when this thing wasn't possible. And I, I think maybe one way to conceptually reinforce that open lily live is like the place where the, the place where things are happening is precisely to keep the addition engraver there because it sends a signal that super important things can happen outside of the core code base. One. But then I think rewriting a lot of um, other engravers in scheme and putting them there reinforces that signal and maybe kind of gives a little bit of push to yeah. I mean, uh, some we have several engravers which you insert into your context and uh, for which you uh, build the outlocks and uh, to change that into a user interface, for example, if you want to have custodies or some, something other which is rarely used and not uh, code that costs a lot, uh, has a high cost. And uh, one would like to change the user interface to that, to just uh, use feature custodies, something like that, and uh, then it gets inserted. So you don't need to bother with your layout blocks, and don't need to bother with other stuff. And that would even hold for built-in C++ engravers, uh, making an interface that uh, just is just exposes less of the internals and it just is friendly to the users is, is I think something uh, which makes a whole lot of sense. But how is, I mean, isn't the, the fact that you add an engraver to a context in the layout mode, that, that is the extension mechanism, why is there, is there a problem with that? Oh, it, it, it's, it that isn't uh, calling for features, but it is modifying code. And calling for features uh, is something which is abstract. You can declare what you want. And modifying uh, the operation of code is something that programmers do. Right. <laughs> I bet yeah. the people that do this don't. Uh, uh, I mean, I can show you a typical LaTeX document, and it starts with dozens of use package declarations, which all have a certain defect. And if I have to do the equivalent by uh, inserting code into the outlooks, uh, consistent engravers, changing uh, properties, and stuff like that, it's, uh, it doesn't feel like calling for features. It feels like modifying uh, a program. And modifying a program is something that feels icky. <laughs> I agree 100%, and I can give a, a concrete example, and this also addresses your we don't empathize necessarily with the people who are using it. I recently introduced someone who is a Sibelius power user to Lilypond. He's very bright, very uh, capable of being a programmer and all of that. He loved the concept of Lilypond, but he kept coming back to me with questions about how do I do this thing. And so polymetric music, the whole switching the time signature from, you know, by the time uh, engraver. I showed him the code and I sent him a block like this and he cut and paste and then he said, why isn't there just slash allow polymetric or something like that? You, the code is so powerful, why isn't there that? And I said, well, there could be, uh, you know, I could try to build that in, but it doesn't exist already. And I think this, this is to that point, rather than having him, who's more capable than most potential users I, I've met, uh, having to say, Remove engraver from this context and remove from this one and insert in this one and insert in this one. A single command that says add tool polymetric. Now we're like, whoo! Maybe I'm missing something, but I, it's been a few years since I've looked at it. But can't you have multiple layout blocks um, and then store those manipulations and variables? So at, under the hood, 
it would just have the extension mechanism. So we're, uh, are we talking levels of type of things? Yes, I think we're, it's, it, it's possible to do that, but someone has to package it. Yes, sure. okay, great. Yeah. Yeah. So we're super close. Yeah, we are close, absolutely. Okay. And, and I think there is uh, the, the, the place where me writing a bunch of contexts in Lillipun code and attaching it to an include file and then trying to put versus load package all core. That's where I fall off the cliff, and, and that's a bigger step. But it, it's, the, it's just more of the same. It's more of being able to abstract uh, commands which are really simple and suddenly do a whole bunch of really cool things for the user. Uh, I, I, have, I have one more question to toss in because I don't know what the time is. This is, it. This is mostly just to facilitate some kind of uh, advance in the addition grader no matter what happens to it. There still isn't, as Alexander uh, intuited, there is not a method of saying after mark C, one measure and a quarter note, apply this, apply this mod. And uh, as I understand it, it's a technical reason why that doesn't exist. It's not just you uh, didn't want to code it. Uh, there will do. The thing with the technical reason was another one, but another thing, another issue. Um, this is something, well, I have to implement, or if someone is looking at the code, don't be scared. Uh, it's, uh, yes, it has to be implemented some way. Um, so it's a missing idea, it's, it shouldn't be that far. Uh, one, one proposal, the problem is you obviously also want to do things like, uh, Two measures before a, please. Right. Uh, yeah. 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 No, no, no. <laughs> that, that, would, that would be uh, that would be more complicated. Uh, may, 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 I may I finish my sentence? Yes. Yes. Is that sorry? Or, uh, <laughs> sorry, sorry. So uh, one solution would be to write out the timing information in one pass, and then after the timing information is written out, we use in a separate pass this written out timing information for knowing where each mark is absolutely in time. And then you can easily uh, calculate where it should be, even if it's two bars before the mark. I have a low tech solution. So we have the mark engraver, which uh, where we print the reversal mark. We can very quickly add logic that um, it also stores in the context property. Uh, it was so many bars since the last mark and it's so many um, whole notes since the last mark and then you can very easily also do uh, and this is the last mark that we have set and then you can, your engraver can just look for the problems and, and wait until it's mark C and uh, R2 and then do it. Oh, but I also want to avoid that uh, we'll be right I, I would love to, as, as a power user of this thing, I would love to avoid requiring a rehearsal mark, at least the display of. What I would like to do is say, uh, in my content code, I guess it would be, in the content code I would say, here I'm putting a marker of some sort. Yeah. It doesn't have to be a it's rehearsal a, mark. Something, it's an anchor, a new yeah. thing, yeah. like a rehearsal mark, but only conceptually, not as graphical. Exactly. And, and this is part of what led to your after function. Uh, yeah. I said, wouldn't it be great to have after an anchor uh, a certain amount of time, and you created that after function. So in the code, I would like to put, here's an anchor called coda. That's my tag for that anchor. And then in the engraver, I'd like to say, starting at coda, go three measures in and apply that. Yeah. Okay, that, that should be doable in the same way. So that's right. Oh, yeah, great. But I've got some code that does some mark tracking that I have never posted for review. Um, and it, it keeps, as marks occur, there's a mark tracking and greater, which collects them, remembers the moment, and, and the mark by NID. This was back when I submitted uh, to do uh, DC and DS. The DC and DS without rehearsal. Right, without a, a separate kind of mark. Yeah. And it, it's not quite complete, but it, it sounds very similar to what you're discussing here. That's, that is fabulous. I'm, I don't mean to uh, interrupt, I just want to make sure time is flowing. So, to get to actionable things here, yeah. we agree that separation from presentation and content is an awesome thing. Do we 
and I think Mike's suggestion, I, I second Mike's suggestion that, uh, that the keeping it in uh, Open Lily Lib is, is a, a good idea. Maybe we should vote on that, however the process is. Uh, and then for the technical things, it seems like you may have at least identified people who could solve the last couple of things yeah. that we've been talking about. And I would say it doesn't make takes obsolete. <laughs> and um, the, 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 the other things are well, well, well. just one thing. I just want to mention. Perhaps you have an idea. Um, all these things happen because the edition engraver broadcasts events. In, in the, if I broadcast an event uh, to change the stuff, if I want to change from the left hand to the right hand and the piano stuff, I keep the leaf on crashing. So change staff. You can't inject change staff as a as a mod. But it, it's just I think we don't need to discuss it. So the, the, there are a couple of things like that. There's uh, polymetric music uh, is very difficult for me to interact with the edition engraver, and I do a fair bit of polymetric music. Mm -hmm. As soon as the meter disappears, the cadenza on or polymetric, suddenly I I'm, I'm wandering around in the dark and it doesn't. If the cadenza is yeah. anchors, then this whole problem. Exactly. If I could say the beginning of the cadenza is an anchor, then after that you've got yeah. So that would solve all of that as well. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then in my talk, there was a separate, uh, if we had, had a, a full talk, a separate issue about code management, because as you can imagine, as, you, as the number of mods increases, and it starts to reference single context and multiple context and multiple uh, moments of a single context, figuring out how to organize your mod code suddenly becomes a new problem in Lily. Uh, related to uh, coding standards of the actual Lily project. And, and I, I have some hard-won uh, experience-based solutions that, that I would have offered, but I don't want to take any more of the time. So thank you very much. The Edition Engraver, thank you.